Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Today I want to talk about operational amplifiers. And this is kind of an introduction uh, video. We're going to have more videos on this subject, but here, let's just go ahead and start. Just kind of showing an amplifier here. So, introducing a few things. You know, not new for all of you, of course, but uh, this symbol here is an amplifier and the block diagram of things. So, doing electrical circuits, you're trying to show an amplifier, that's it. And then use A as the term for gain. Now, technically, there'd be a little V there if this was a uh, gain for showing voltage, okay? So, I'm just showing uh, in this particular amplifier, we got a gain of three. So, we put a signal in, and look, that's perfectly three times higher. You can tell, right, the scale? <laughs> well, you know, it's as good as I can draw. But anyway, you get the idea. So, there's an amplifier, input, output, you know, in this case, showing their end phase and all that kind of stuff, right? All right, so what's important about this? A uh, couple things. One is that when we put a signal connected to this, the generator might not have a very strong output. So we want this to have very high input impedance. So when we put this here, you know, we're going to have a little bit of current coming into this circuit to make it operate. And we want that to be very small. All right. So um, there's going to be a little bit of current, I guess, is a point. So the, ideally, it would look like this, gain of three, and that'd be it. But, you know, nothing's perfectly ideal. So it's going to be a little bit of input impedance, but we want it very high. And let's just say on a typical even a general purpose op amp, you're going to have mega ohms there, okay? So it's going to be pretty small. It's going to be fractions of microamps, usually. Okay, then the output, you want it to be very low impedance because you want to be able to drive that signal. You know, you might have speakers out here, and you're trying to drive those speakers. Well, if you have a little small signal amplifier, it's not going to be able to do that. I mean, we're going to be talking about operational amplifiers, usually, you know, small devices, low power. Now, there are power op amps that can actually drive speakers. But, you know, for the most part, ones I think we're talking about for a lot of things, you know, you can use these things for uh, smaller amplifiers, maybe headphone amps. Um, when you're picking up a voltage signal for feedback, you could use an op amp. Or if you're looking at current, like small current signals, and you want to send that back, then you can use an amplifier. Okay, but yeah, this doesn't look like what we're used to, right? I'm just showing one pin. So I'm just showing this is an amplifier. But it's not reference to anything. And, you know, we want to have something that's referenced to. I guess I could have shown, here's the positive signal coming in, and the ground's just long here. But then this guy would look like he's just floating around. He's not referenced or connected to ground in any way, the way I've shown it. But like I say, that's a block diagram. Okay, so let's show what the amplifier would actually look like. And also, here's another thing, is this voltage swing. In this case, I showed three, but I didn't really show what voltage this is. Is this 10 volts and this 30 volts, you know? Or is this half a volt and this is, you know one and a half volts I mean so I'm not really showing that there is a limit right of course that's another real world thing ideally you could put whatever you want you get whatever you want out but real world you'd have power supply rails and they're typically I'll draw them on here but if you have say this thing's operating off of say a plus or minus voltage and the reason we'd want minus is if this is what we're gonna call like zero volts and this is swinging AC plus and minus then we want a plus and minus power supply you don't have to have that and I'll show that later too but for this video we're just going to show yeah we have plus and minus voltage rails and we can swing to the plus and to the minus voltage rail okay so kind of like an audio amplifier right it's a lot like an audio amplifier this could be an audio amplifier um, be not a very good one gain of three but so you know you would have voltage drills like plus or minus 20 volts for instance so this voltage 
it may not be able to swing all the way to plus 20 and peak all the way to minus 20 peak. You know, the peaks might, there might be some circuitry between whatever this output can drive to the actual voltage that's feeding this. So, you know, there's some headroom there, okay? But some amplifiers can go higher and, you know, but usually there's some headroom, okay? So that's another limitation. So let me draw the circuit the way we're used to seeing it. All right, so we're back. Uh, and I've got a few more things drawn on here. So now I've got the voltage rails, what we refer to them as. And also I've shown the little symbols, the little bar. And that's another thing to get used to. That's a, a global uh, signal. Uh, so what that means is that when you have a signal like that and on your schematic, see we're not showing lines, we're not showing all the circuitry for the power splice, right? But you can imagine the power splice somewhere. And these bars just show that they're connected to something else with the bar that says plus 15 volts. This one's connected to something else with minus 15 volts. And when you're using software, it ties all those things together. So it you know it globally around your schematic connects all those things together so just so more terminology and I'm coming in the positive terminal and I have a minus terminal so now I have differential inputs the difference the voltage difference between these two is what we see out here now we have a reference the reference in this case is analog ground and so the output of this is going to be now, let's say if we go back to that 3x thing, we could say, well, this is going to be three times bigger than this. But anyway, so now we can go all the way up to 15 volts here. It's not going to quite go to 15. Actually, depending on the amplifier, of course, there's all kinds of different ones that behave, you know, some better. There's trade-offs between all of them. But you're, you know, with, say, a bipolar meaning you're using transistors BJT transistors this is going to be a few volts from there so say it's going to be able to swing plus minus uh, 12 volts let's say okay plus minus 12 volts so and we are going to have a little bit of current leaking in from this generator that's putting the signal in so we'll have a little bit of current flow in there and okay so what does that mean how do we set this gain well another thing I want to show you is I've got the minus symbol on top Okay, plus symbol on bottom. That's also some something from the old school days that the reason you would just generally show every amplifier drawn with the minus signal on top, when you're looking at a schematic, you would just know that that's the case. Sometimes these symbols are hard to read, and you would know that, oh, the minus symbol is always drawn on top. And I'm not going to say without exception, but that's a general rule. It's just a good practice to do that okay so another part of the art of electronics uh, all right so let me just go a little bit further with this okay so we're back here at the board and I've got a little more circuitry on here we got our operational amplifier plus minus 15 volts those are our voltage rails okay and one terminal the plus terminal I've got reference to analog ground so this pins going to be zero volts and then our signal coming in is referenced analog ground and it's coming into RN and then through RN we got RF strapped to the output that's our feedback resistor we'll talk about that and then it's going to drive our load resistor RL to another uh, you know this our, our load resistor is also referenced analog ground okay so, you know, this is inverting circuit, if you've seen it before. We're going to talk about that. Well, let's just talk. So this is inverting circuit. You've probably seen it before. But the reason it's inverting is because your signal comes in here. Say your plus signal, your sine wave, it's going positive. Hits this minus terminal, it drives this guy negative. So a positive voltage gets you a negative output. So that inverts your signal. So it's inverting. Uh, this would be your non-inverting input. This would be your inverting input. All right, so I showed this one first because I'm going to just walk you through it. I'm going to show you the math on how this actually works. The math is actually pretty easy, so let me show you that too. But 
so the equation, it's A, you know, that symbol A with the volts. So gain with volts is going to be the output voltage, whatever output voltage we get, divided by the input voltage. And it's going to have a minus sign because it inverted the voltage. Well, the reason these resistors are used, which I'm going to show you how that works, but it turns out that the gain is the minus R feedback resistor divided by the R input resistor. All right, so let's just talk about that for a moment. When this, when you put this plus voltage in here from the generator and the minus comes out here, it's strapped across here to come back to the same point point where the, where the signal is coming in. And the reason it's doing that is as this guy's going minus and we want gain, right? We want it to be a bigger signal. So as this signal goes bigger, it's going to go negative, but it's going to drive this to zero. So if this was, let's say the peak voltage over here is one volt, when this is trying to get one volt here, the input signal, this guy's trying to push back one volt to cancel that. Okay, and so as it does that, it's going, you know, it's going to equalize this one, which is zero volts. It's, it's reference to ground. So Vx, what I'm showing right here is Vx is zero volts. It's our virtual ground because it's virtually the same thing as ground. So uh, now here's the thing. If if this thing drives this, let's say you have one volt here, we're back to get gain the three thing. And you got three volts here. Well, then this resistor has to be three times bigger than this one because if this signal is going to be three times bigger and we want one volt here, then that makes sense, right? Hopefully that makes sense. We have zero volts here. And let's, let's look at current flow. So current's going to come in here come up here, go out here, and this way. This guy's going negative, right? So it's going to come all the way down negative, and we'll ignore this RL for now, but this guy's gonna go low, but this is gonna make this go low enough that this guy becomes zero volts. All right, so let's show the math and how that works. All right, so I'm starting the math. I got Ohm's Law up here. That's all it is, just Ohm's Law. So. Uh, what we want to do is come up with the equation here, and we want to come up with the equation here, because this equation is going to have V out in it, and this equation is going to have V in in it. And our equation is supposed to be V out divided by V in, right? That's gain, V out divided by V in. So, uh, to solve for this one, we say the current going through here is V in minus Vx, is the voltage difference across that resistor and divide by that resistance. So voltage divided by resistance is current. So there's I1. All right, what's the equation for this? Let's do it. All right, so now I've got the second equation that we needed. Um, a mathematical thing, whenever you have two unknowns, you need two equations. Linear algebra, just another term, just kind of throwing some stuff out there. Uh, a little math I remember. <laughs> Ohm's law again. So we know I1. We already found out what I1 was from this equation. But we want the equation with V out. We're trying to get V in and V out together, right? So I'll show you how we're going to do that. But So I also showed the plus and minus. Current comes in here. Plus, minus, drops voltage there. So we got a voltage drop. We got a voltage drop here. And the voltage drop is Vx minus V out. So Vx minus V out over RF, Ohm's law, volts over Ohm's is current, and it's equal to the same current because it's a series circuit. Now, we, we talked about that leakage current. That's going to be really teeny compared to this, so we're going to ignore that because really we can. Okay, so there's the equations. How do we solve for these things? So they're both equal to this, so we can just say they're equal to each other, right? So... Okay, they're equal to each other. And look, here, here you kind of see what's happening. Here's our RF and here's our RN. Remember the gain is RF divided by RN with the minus sign, right? So if we cross multiply, if we multiply both sides by RF, then this RF cancels and we end up with RF up here, right? 
All right, so multiply both equations. You can multiply uh, or divide both sides of an equation by the same thing, and it's the same thing, right? If, you know, right? So we multiply this side of the equation with RF, and we multiply this side by RF. So that cancels these RFs. RF divided by RF is one, so that cancels. So now we have VX minus VO, and we have RF divided by RN. So we wanted that, RF over RN. So you know what, let's get this stuff over on this side. So we got RF and RN all by itself, right? So now we divide both sides by this. <laughs> Back again. Um, all right, so I divide both sides by VN divide, uh, minus VX. So that cancels that guy off that side of the equation. So that's what I mean by cross multiplication. You, you, you multiply this up here and this down here and it cancels. Okay, so uh, now we have RF over RN. All that's gone away. I'll rewrite that. And over here, now this guy here is underneath this, and the RFs cancel. So let me, let me rewrite that. I'm going to erase these things so it makes it cleaner. All right, we're back. Simplified it. So now I've just drew, the, you know, it looks cleaner, so now you can see what's going on. RF divided by RN. That's what we said, but it was a minus sign in there, right? So let's see where that comes from. So it's really equal to this stuff. Now we got to get rid of that VX. But remember VX is ground. It's zero volts. So it's zero. So we just get rid of it. V VX is zero. So let's just make it zero. Let's get rid of it. There we go. So minus V out divided by VN. So that's our gain. There's our minus sign. Okay. So it's just RF divided by RN is minus V out over VN. There's your inverted amplifier. We'll do the non-inverted next time, okay? But I thought this would be a good start. What do you guys think? This makes sense? Let me know what you think. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, introductory to op amps. Hey, thanks for my patrons. Appreciate you guys. I lost a few, gained a few. Yeah, that's the way it goes, right? So we're doing good. Thanks for joining us, patrons. You guys that have done that in the last month. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, you know, losing them, it's not so much that I lose money. It's that I just kind of feel sad that I lose patrons that for some reason they didn't want to support. <laughs> but then it makes me feel good that there's new patrons. So, yeah, it just keeps on balancing out. So things are going good. Uh, appreciate you guys. And... Hope you like this first of uh, many to come. All right, we'll see you next time.